Hey there guys, welcome back to Hersey Games and welcome back to our QPR career mode. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the series. If you're not all caught up, then make sure you go check out the playlist, get yourself caught up, and then of course, welcome back to today's episode. Today, we start off, spoilers alert, of course, at the top of the table, sitting pretty well and truly flying high at the moment. 14 wins, one draw, three losses, but just like real life, as I say, sitting atop the championship tree. Today, we're going to crack on, obviously, with plenty to do, plenty of games to get underway and uh, again, the plan is to try and get through as many games as I can, obviously, because we're now playing the games rather than doing the highlights in a couple. It does mean that it takes a little bit longer for me to get through things. So not as many games per episode. But you can see this December is absolutely chock-a-block, including no days off Christmas Day against Bristol City. But obviously, we're not going to get that far through. We'll get as far through as we can. We'll definitely obviously get to the Blackpool game. If I can get the Swansea game stuck in as well, then I will. But uh, first of all, we have this game against Huddersfield, which is not going to be an easy game. Um, I don't know where they're sat in the table right now. But um, they could very easily be another team that sets up five at the back, potentially set an 11th as it stands right now. We just have to power on. We just have to keep doing our thing. That's what we're going to do. Okay, going into game number one. And just want to very quickly point out, I saw a couple of comments saying that Johansson is not good. Get rid of Johansson, et cetera, et cetera. I personally really like Johansson in this game. I think uh, he really suits the way the new game style is, having really viable passes in the midfield. For me, Johansson is definitely staying this season and is definitely a main staple in the team. He's not in this game, however, because he's tired. It's stamina, that's the reason. It's why Ozzy is coming up right back. Hutton and Willock are sort of borderline. Maybe I should take one of them off uh, and start Leko. But uh, I decided against it. Start with a stronger 11 as I can. But yeah, Laird and um, Johansson are both particularly tired. So both of them are missing out starting today. Both are on the bench, however. Without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start this game. Let's see how we do and uh, try and take Huddersfield on here. Uh, again, there just isn't this underground stuff at Loftus Road. It just doesn't exist, EA. I don't know where you think that is appearing, but it, it just, it's not there. We barely have a compound. Uh, but here it is, here under the lights at Loftus Road. Uh, obviously a midweek, a little cheeky midweek up against Huddersfield. We just need to try and keep up the form, keep up the winning ways. That is obviously what we want to try and do as often as possible. And hopefully today we can carry that on. Get another three points under our belt. Get to 15 wins. It's changed my camera angle. I'll fix that and then we'll start the game. I just was starting off on this left-hand side here. Going to cut inside, uh, but Dickie's going to step in really, really well. It does get tackled, doesn't get fouled though, apparently. Aussie does well to win it and then we'll just get rid of that. Let's not mess around. We have found a little cheeky pass there to Chrissy Willock. Going to play it across here to Luke Amos. Switching all the way across to Kenneth Powell. Getting himself a goal in real life. Uh, the other day against Cardiff, but I couldn't make too much from it there. I've I've really struggled. That's that's the most I've had the ball. That's the most I've been able to offer of anything. That hopefully goes to show you I'm really up against it. This Huddersfield side are just getting the ball, keeping it, and I'm not really able to create too much. Ball here with Ilias, just inside uh, their half. Hutton with a lovely touch, lovely turn, doesn't quite find the pass through to Linden. Would have been a thing of beauty if he'd found that, uh, thread that needle almost, but uh, it didn't quite work out, and now, Huddersfield with a bit of a chance to count here. You can see this is sort of what I'm talking about with them knocking it around. It's a lovely through ball there. Good block. I think it hit Dickey. Does go out for a corner. So, oh no, went for a goal kick. What well up, boys? Ozzy Kaka. Lovely ball there into Hutton. Hutton to Amos. Amos doesn't quite win that one. Real shame. Oh, we do win a free kick, though. Okay. Free kick, not too crazy far out. Apparently, Hutton is our best free kick taker. Um. You know what? I'm going to give it to Ilias. I'll let Ilias take it. I, I just feel. A little bit more, I don't know, I feel like it makes more sense. Let's give it a go. Put a decent bit of power in it, a bit of curve over the wall. Oh, it's a good save. It was on target. Free kicks in QPR, we don't get many of them. We don't score too many. Very nearly scored that one, though. Still 0-0. Ilias brings this ball forward now. Going to play it inside to our man, Hutton, who's going to turn. He's going to pull it onto his left, tries to finesse, hits the defender. Too many players back and amongst it there. Stopping the shot from really going through cleanly. Only a couple of minutes now till half time. Amos, though, winning the ball in a decent spot, but we can't retain possession and we do give it away. It's going to be Huddersfield, possibly with the last chance bringing this ball forward here. Ozzy's got to stay awake and does so very, very well. Had a very good game. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Um, our main three fullback options being Ozzy, Led, and, uh, and Pal. All three are very, very good. I enjoy using all three of them. Hutton tried the shot and maybe should have looked up and played the pass to Linden. It's probably going to be half time. It is half time. It's nil nil at the break it's been a tough one to get into we've not had many chances the free kick definitely being our best chance it's been it's been a tricky one I've, I've struggled to really get a foothold in the game struggled really to create or offer too much they've not created loads with all due respect as well you can see Hutton getting a little bit tired um 
I'm going to stick it out with Hutton for a little bit. We've got six days break, so hopefully players will sort of be fighting and fit and ready to go. We've got Lecco on the bench. We've got someone like um, um, Roberts as well. Roberts will probably come on for Willock and we'll probably bring Lecco on as striker uh, to just bring on some fresh legs. And we know what Lecco can do as a substitution as well. He has done it for us countless times now, last episode being one of them. But now we finally get this ball forward into Linden. I've not really had a chance to get Linden on the ball. It doesn't get to create too much. But second half, we need to change that. We need to get the lead top goal scorer on the ball and hopefully in the goals. Got a few players over here have Huddersfield, but Ozzy Kaka yet again stepping in fantastically, making a really, really good standing tackle there and making the difference in the defence at the moment. But now, Chrissy Willock with a chance to bring this ball forward, looks up and finds Linden, edge of the box. He scuffed it, he's hit his left foot, the defender stepped in well and put him off. Uh, but with 65 minutes gone, three changes I have made. Roberts, Clark, Salter and Lecco coming on for Willock, uh, Dickey and... Um, oh God, who else did I take off? Hutton. Took off Harvey Hutton. So three like-for-like -like changes particularly. Um, if I'm being honest with you, obviously we're playing Roberts as a winger more than a cam because we don't really have that cam role at the moment. Good winner there on, uh, on the header, sorry, I should say, from Aussie. But uh, yeah, three like-for-like -like changes and... Just fresh legs, really, if I'm being honest with you. I've definitely noticed, I mentioned it at the start of the game, what Johansson brings with the passing. Definitely noticed that missing bit of passing in the midfield. Ilias oh, does win the header. I, I try to flick it on rather than shoot with that header from Ilias. Doesn't quite sadly mount to anything, but we just need to we just need to create a little bit more. We need to, we've got 20 minutes on the clock to just find that final bit of luck. Find the shot. Will we get there? Fingers crossed, eh? I just have a good looking chance here, but Clark Salter coming away with this fantastically. And I'm just going to bring this forward now with Clark Salter. Wait for the run from Linden. Lovely run indeed. And look who's making a run now. It's our super sub. It's Lecco. He couldn't quite get the touch I needed. Tried to bring it down and take it up, but he took his first touch and it went down. Uh, and it took the ball away from him and the chance really as well. If the ball goes off soon, I might make just a couple of late, late subs. Uh, just again, a little bit of fresh legs. A little bit of a few minutes on a, on a couple of players as well, but I don't see the ball particularly going off anytime soon. Got to stop this chance, so Jimmy Dunn standing his man up nicely. Does well, keeps the ball, wins it. Only a couple of minutes left. You know what? We'll stick it out. You guys can watch the remaining few minutes with me and see if we manage to create anything now, but we're just going to have to turn into trouble, so turns round. Aussie, oh, I wanted that to field. I've asked that to field, and if that had been where it had gone... That would have been an absolutely lovely pass because it's one of those that just takes you through the midfield, gets the other side of their midfield and puts you in a chance. Was he getting megs there? Not looking good here. Jimmy Dunn steps in well initially. Got to keep this out. Don't let them get a shot away. No shots. Ah, oh, it's going to be full time, isn't it? It's a frustrating one. It's a, it's a nil-nil. It's a tough one to take that because Huddersfield defended really, really well. And when they got the ball, they just kept it really nicely as well. The defence, our defence, I think really did put in a good showing today. But I think it was just that both defences, both teams' defences definitely outperformed the attack. So, nil-nil, bit of a stinker, but it could have been a lot worse. It could have been a lot worse. We'll, we'll take the point, but uh, three was obviously what we were really after. That there, that's an annoying scuff. The dropping of points doesn't see us drop down the table. Birmingham, uh, Birmingham, sorry, Blackburn, don't know where I got that, haven't played their game yet. So, Sheffield United do leapfrog them on goal difference, but Blackburn could obviously climb at the table a little bit with their game in hand plus we play them next that is a very important game also rather annoyingly uh we did have our um some games rescheduled and this has been moved forward two days which is unfortunate however you can see the team is fighting fit and ready to go Johansson and Laird both make their way back in I'm glad I rested Hutton and Willock in the end when I did because if I played them like another 10 or 15 minutes I think there's a good chance they wouldn't have been fully fit to play this game so I think we crack on into this. Obviously, some good, good players at Blackburn, but back-to-back midweek home games. Hopefully this one, though, ends in three points instead of one. But uh, yeah, we've got to really give our all. We've got to play better than we did in the last one. That is for sure. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's going to be a tough one. First against what would be second if they win. Uh, it, it really puts them in a very good position to start catching up with us. This, however, does give us a really good position to start bridging that gap again. Or, or not bridging it, but actually widening the gap the literally the opposite of bridging the gap so fingers crossed we can pull that off obviously we've got Brereton Diaz up there to be careful with as well XQPR um career mode hero is Ben Brereton before the Diaz days so uh yeah hopefully we keep him quiet we've got our new uh absolute hero in Lyndon Dykes hopefully he can uh get himself back on the score sheet but a couple of quiet uh games for Lyndon so 
It'll be nice to get him back in and amongst the goals. Let's see if we can switch this here. What a ball that is from Harvey Hutton. Take a bow, mate. Unlucky. That was a... Oh, hold on. Oh, that was close. Very close indeed. But, mate, Harvey Hutton with a beautiful switch. But I've been with numbers forward here. And actually, that could end up working out for us as we have pinched this ball back here. Johansson, I've waited too long. I have waited too long. It was a beautiful idea. It would have been a beautiful run. But I've timed the pass poorly. Johansson plays it into field. Field sees the run here from Chris Willock. Chris Willock with the Traveller finds the back of the net. Again, Chrissy Willock finally starting to get in some goal scoring form. Now that we're playing these games, obviously gets into some slightly better positions. Plus the formation definitely helps a player like Willock out, gets him a little bit more on the ball, a little bit more space as well. So lovely, lovely stuff. The ball from Field was lovely. The pass from Johansson, nice and simple, plays it beautifully into him. And then Field just finds the man that we need to find, which is Chrissy Willock. I've also upped the keeper um, uh, ability, by the way. I, I had that suggested to up the keeper. So I've upped the keeper abilities to 60%. Uh, rather than being on 50, which is like the standard. Uh, 50 is like what everything is on. I've boosted them by 10%. So hopefully we have a few less stinky moments from the goalkeeper AI moments. But uh, yes, 1-0, first goal of the episode. And uh, it's coming at a pretty good time against obviously a pretty important opponent. So very well done, Chrissy Willock. Puts us 1-0 up. And actually, oh, I was going to say, there was no advantage given there. So I thought maybe the ref had decided that was a little bit 50-50. Although it definitely probably was a foul. <laughs> Oh, really good pass through here. Burton Diaz finds a really good option out wide. And Seni Dieng is beaten. I'm not entirely sure what actually happened there. My, my defense just sort of wasn't there. Hedges makes it 1-1. Um, I'm, I'm very baffled that the ball through was lovely, but Burton Diaz with an acre of space and then Hedges with all the time in the world as well. It just... I, I, Powell wasn't there. Dickie had disappeared. Johansson was trying to come back and cover the space that Dickie had left, but... Um, or I think actually done as the left centre back. So not entirely, that's a terrible tackle, by the way. Not entirely sure how or why that space was there, but it was. And has to be said, Blackburn have made the most of it. 1 1. And that is not a good time to concede as well, just before half time. Maybe one last chance here to get something just to try and get our lead back. Ilias Chair. Oh, it's a very good save. If I thought about it, the sweat was there to play it across to Linden. Could have easily put ourselves back in the lead but you know what I've probably got used to the keepers being not as boosted as they were and I think that has probably made a difference there let's try and whip this bad boy in there again in real life we don't score from many corners we're not going to score from that one as that is poorly taken from me there didn't be the first man I hate it when we don't be the first man and then I've done it myself as well 1-1 at half time frustrating very frustrating to go in at 1-1 but it happens it's not ideal but it does happen um, all we've got to do is bounce back. All we have to do is bounce. It's as simple as that, boys. Just bounce back. Your hands will probably make way at some point in the half, uh, just because obviously he is a little bit tired, but he is a little bit older than the other options we have. So Amos will probably make his way on maybe 60 to 70th minute mark. Obviously, Johansson, as I say, does bring that uh that passing ability in there. Oh, that's so close to Hutton. Nearly finding it through to Linden. Doesn't quite pick the ball back up to recreate the chance either there, but one one time to go obviously i'm not going to stress i'm not going to panic i'm not going to worry what i am going to do hopefully though is find the way back into the lead let's find out hutton gonna try and find linden does so fantastically linden slows it down takes his time and finds the back of the net back in the goals is big man linden dykes just like he is in real life which is so good to see by the way it's so good to see him getting some goals now and, and getting that confidence up now his confidence is there you just you wait just you wait goal scoring linden a confident linden is a goal scorer on Linden and hopefully he continues the goal scoring in the career mode as that puts us 2-1 back up into the lead that I think we deserve. Oh, Laird been beaten again on that right hand side. Diaz with the shot. Burton Diaz played that at that close post and Sandy Dieng had to be aware to it. Four changes. Leco, Roberts, Dizel and Clark Salter on for Dunn, Johansson, Chair and Linden. Uh, all of them are um, like stamina or fitness changes apart from Chair which is obviously us trying to get uh, Tyler Roberts a little bit more game time so that Leeds don't recall him because the squad depth would be it'd be a shame to lose out on him because he is a good option off the bench and uh, again numbers in the squad aren't too crazy deep right now we'll have a little chat after this game actually um, about some potential things to do in January there's been a few suggestions um, and uh, a few things to potentially look at which we will do um, but yeah I will we'll talk about that probably after this game Oh, really good through ball, that one. Uh, but Dickie is just going to get there. And Senny, I'm just going to get a, like get that away 
from our area. Roberts with a decent first touch, but two against one. He was always going to struggle to retain possession there. But that was, a, again, another another threatening looking pass and uh, opportunity for Blackburn Rovers. They have not been bad by any stretch here. Got to be careful. He's going to go through. <sighs> Kenneth Powell was well and truly beaten, but Senny Dieng thankfully wasn't. Only seven minutes on the clock, and it is... Again, a little bit of squeaky bum time, boys. I will not lie to you. Uh, going to just take off Pal and bring on Aussie. Just some fresh legs. I have to say, Pal and Laird, not, not that, well, Pal, apart from that, really hasn't had a bad game at all. Laird has been a little bit suspect on a couple of moments. I won't lie to you. He's had a couple of uh, moments where he has been beaten I've, and I've, I've sort of highlighted and mentioned it uh, in the first half. Not as much, but second half for sure. Oh, Hutton was away there. If maybe I'd just taken that pass a little bit quicker... Could have had a good chance for Hutton to maybe push through for a third, but not long left. A couple of minutes. So again, as per usual, I will sort of play it out. You guys can see the closing minutes here. Amos steps in fantastically well there. Actually, that's not Amos, is it? I don't know who that is. I think it was Roberts. Lecco not quite through away with the through ball. Three minutes added on here. Not too long left. Got to just make sure we don't do anything daft here. I'm just going to jockey with Dizel just to try and block off the passing options. They're going to play it out wide. Aussie going to have to close his man down. Aussie doesn't quite step in quick enough. The ball reaches the edge of the box. It fires over the bar and that is full time. Again, squeaky bum time indeed, but an important three points, a very important three points against a team that were right on our tails, if I'm being honest with you. So that is a really, really good game to pick up. That's a six pointer. That is the epitome of a six pointer boy. So very big win. Very well done, boys. Linden back in the goals, which is what you love to see. But uh, yeah, 2-1. We get the win and we move on. Let's go. Okay, a big, big win. As I said, as you can see, that will definitely push that gap that little bit wider now. Blackburn Rovers having had played the game in hand, we're now eight points clear of them and Sheffield United. However, three points clear now of Millwall. Teams just seem to be sort of jumping, chopping and changing below us. We just need to keep our head well and truly above the water and ahead of the chasing pack. That is our priority. And hopefully we can keep doing that as well. That would be obviously ideal to keep pushing on from there. Just to very quickly touch on before we jump in going towards our next game, we'll have the youth players and the youth scout stuff come through as well. Should be there just as we start the next, or just before we start the next game. Had a few suggestions for some things to maybe look to do in the January transfer window. Now, we're not going to spend loads. As you can see, our outgoing is considerably more than our current balance. So we've spent £12 million um, and we haven't earned that as of yet. So it's one thing we have to bear in mind is I do want to try and run a little bit on, you know, a bit of FFP, trying to balance the books a little bit. Because QPR as a club, we although we have very rich owners, we're not a particularly rich club at the moment. We don't spend lots of money. So I'm thinking in January, it's going to be another bit of a scrape, not spending too much money. We maybe spend some money on a player. Otherwise, we look at free agents. We look at pre-contracts could be a good way in or or players that will potentially be free in the next season. Um, and I think that might be how we have to play it. I don't think we can afford or justify spending that kind of money right now because you can see we, we simply don't have it. We're on a minus two million pounds profit. Uh, the club worth is 36.4. The projection is 33.5. So it's projected that the club's going to go down in value, which is obviously not good. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm just trying to make sure we have job security. I've seen so many people uploading stri like streams or, or, or video series that get sacked in these saves because of the way the new manager system works. The last thing I'd want to do is this series get cut short because of a silly thing like that. But anyway, that's enough of that. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments. Let's uh, look at the youth players and then we will look at uh, the next game. Okay, our monthly reports. Let's have a little look-see. Let's see what's going on here. Aidan Donnelly... Looks okay. Michael McLean doesn't look that fantastic. Uh, Chris Kennedy looks decent. 200,000 to start off with, not too shabby. Pierce Peak is going to be a no. <laughs> Gleason is going to be a no. Matthew O'Neill, a no. Aaron McNamara, sign him up. Into our Portuguese scout. Fernando Pereira looks a decent start, but I'm going to have to say no. Uh, and then... Luciano Abreu looks okay. Rodeo da Silva doesn't look great. Uh, Ricardo Cruz maybe needs another month. We'll keep scouting these two. Abrea could be a decent starting rating, but we'll keep scouting these two. Finally, off to our scout in England, Charlie Brooks. It's a no from me. Good sir. Alexander Giles, again, doesn't look that fantastic. Jamie Long, sadly, not too great. Nicholas Lane doesn't look too great. And Ollie Hunter, sadly, also doesn't look that good. 
So here is the current youth setup and everything. Uh, Dimitriou is going to get released. We're not going to be using him. He just doesn't look good enough. Uh, he's not going to be going anywhere near the team. Uh, we'll also get rid of um, Abu Ahmed. Again, just isn't going to be getting anywhere near us. So let's get rid of him as well. Um, Mal Maladonna. Mal wait, Maldonado. Incredible name. But I don't think he's going to be that good. Um, tempted to release him. I'll give him another month. Same with Branco. But uh, we've got some great, great potentials here, including obviously Dexter Howe, who I think, boys, I'm going to make the decision once he's converted to centre mid, I'm going to call him up. If that happens before January or after Jan, whichever happens first, January or him becoming a centre mid, he's getting called up and probably loaned out. But enough of the old admin. Let's get into our next game up against Blackport, a five-man midfield, not a five-man defence. Um, obviously, we've got a two-man midfield, so we've got to be a little bit careful not to get outrun in the uh, the middle of the park but it has to be said we are playing our third game at home in a row i think on a midweek mad i just thought it's definitely not a midweek it's definitely a weekend game so there's that but regardless let's see if we can make it two wins on the bounce uh it's snowing i didn't change that did i i didn't look at the weather i forgot it was december i hate playing in the snow on fifa because it's so naff Oh, dearie me. At least we've got the winter ball when it's got the winter lines and everything because I, di I didn't even check. I didn't look at the weather. I didn't see that it was snowing. Oh, dearie me. Anyway, regardless, let's crack on. Let's hopefully come away with three points. What we could do is with a downpour of not just snow, but of goals from QPR. Lyndon Dykes hopefully can get himself some more. The cameraman definitely just glitched through a box. Don't know how you've done that, mate. You're a wizard, lad. Let's crack on. Come on, you are. Let's go for another win. The Ash Chairs, hopefully going to get this back from Johansson. He is lovely little uh, one-two in the end. I, lo I have to say, although I don't like playing in the snow, the effect, the little effects of the snow when they're running I do quite like it. It's quite nice. Let's get this ball in there. It's going to be dinked up quite high. Oh, Lyndon Hutton. Oh, he's taken a touch. I've asked for the shot. He's taken a touch. That could have been a little cheeky goal there because that was definitely a shot that I made with Lyndon. I reckon that's why Hutton hasn't hit it first time because it's registered that that initial touch from Lyndon... <laughs> Was a shot, not a pass. Blackpool, the ball out wide here. Well stepped in there. Has to be said, very well stepped in from Ethan Laird. Did a really good job there. Got a chance here for Ilias to maybe try and run through. Going to look down and find Hutton, who's going to look up. Oh, sorry, he's found Dykes, who's then found Hutton. And Hutton, going to try the shot. And Harvey Hutton is going to bag himself his first goal of the episode today. Lovely stuff. Really nice bit of play. Mate, the last thing you want to do in the snow is the worm. You absolute madman, but this man does not care. Harvey Hutton with another goal to his season tally. I think that's maybe six for him now. It's so good to see him getting the goals. It really, really is. I absolutely love the fact that he is getting some game time and getting some goals. Another Traveller, by the way, on that uh, outside of the left uh, left boot there. But really, really love to see it. Great, great finish. Great, great, uh, great, great bit of play, I should say, with the passing from chair into Linden and then setting away Hutton. 1-0, boys. Cracking start. Oh, what's a nice bit of play there from Blackpool as they get it. A bit central and look at the space. Look at the space he's in there on the far post. An absolute sitter. It was harder to miss it and he is going to make it 1-1. Blackpool get themselves back into the game. Anderson with a simple, simple finish. I mean, it was an acrobatic finish, but it was, it was difficult to miss that. You can see the defensive line is just a bit deep. Obviously, I'm trying to make the tackle with Field and Field or as Johansson, I think, actually. I'm obviously really, really deep, so... Two men behind the ball. It's going to be 1-1, one, one, boys. Not ideal. Blackpool coming forward again here. Another chance. This time central. And just like that, smash and grab at three, four minutes apart. And it's 2-1 to Blackpool. It's come out of nowhere, boys. It's well and truly come out of nowhere. They, they'd offered incredibly little up until the goal that I'd scored. Or the, the goal that they scored, I should say. But look at this. Really nice pass there. And the second pass, the defence is just split wide open and... Certainly tries to slide out and block it with his knees and he can't. And that is 2-1. And, uh, okay. Um, right. Up against it now. Chrissy Willock brings this ball forward. Lovely run. We see here from Linden. Can we get ourselves a very quick goal second afterwards? No, we can't. Very good save from the keeper. Again, boosting the keepers. You can definitely tell the difference, which I'm, I'm okay with. I'm okay that it's not every single shot I'm having is flying into the back of the net. It's, oh, it's I was going to say, it's nice to see them make saves sometimes. I'd still like to score. <laughs> It's a very good ball yet again here from Blackpool, who yet again are causing our fullbacks problems. Has to be said, Powell, not necessarily at fault for the first goal, but didn't really 
uh, help out too much with defending the first cross. And obviously Laird losing his man for the goal as well. So not a great end to that half. A really good first 30 or so minutes and a terrible final 15. Definitely need to inject something. I'm not even sure what into the squad for the second half. And I'll tell you what I think part of it is going to be is it is going to be Jonathan Lecco coming on at left wing. Nothing against Ilias at all in the slightest. Just some pace, some fresh legs, and some serious, serious pace, which Jonathan Lecco has in abundance. So second half, I was going to say more of the same, more of the first two thirds of the first half, because that was good. The final third was terrible. Hutton here with a bit of space has done really well to push away from the defense. And now he's just got to try and get that shot on target. He's pulled onto his right. Not what I wanted him to do, but he has found the back of the net. Very happy for Hutton to bag a brace. Love that. I'm absolutely over the moon. If he can get a hat trick, I've already got a title in my head for the video. So that'd be nice if he can pull that one off. But really good. Picked up the ball in the middle of the park there and just went. Just absolutely steamed forward with it. Again, I wanted him to shoot on that left foot. I didn't ask for Travella. I don't want to do Travellas too often because they are very much broken. And you don't see loads of people score with Travellas unless you're Chrissy Willock, Ilias Chair, or Adel Tarabt or Abirieze. All of them are pretty good at him. But uh, yeah, I didn't want to be a bit too overpowered by doing another one. But took it on his right. Bagged it with his right. It's good to see a little bit of development there for uh, for Harvey Hudson because shooting on his right what was causing him problems for the first few games. Um, and now, apparently it doesn't matter. 2-2 two, two boys back in it. We need a third. I want three points today. I don't want anything less than three points. Kenneth Powell, a little bit higher up the pitch than I'd like to see him, especially as Blackpool are pushing forward here again down the wings. That's where they're starting their attacks. Mate, very, very good effort there. Fantastic save from Stanley Dieng. They're making a change I'm not saying I'm copying them, but I was about to make one myself. Anyway, Luke Amos is going to come on a centre mid. And Powell has been caught out a few times. I'm going to bring on Ozzy. I think Ozzy really does offer some good fresh legs with half an hour to go. Um, and as I say, I've enjoyed using Powell, Laird and Ozzy, all three of them. But I have to say, in today's episode, the most consistent has been Ozzy Kakai. So we'll see if he can just come on, settle things down for just 20, 30 minutes and try and help us push on for a third while not conceding one. That is the main thing here. Let's just try and make sure this corner is done and dusted it is eventually we get it away with field although we don't eventually okay we're good we're good we're good Hutton on the ball here gonna take his time a little bit here gonna try and push centrally to go through and that's a terrible tackle it's got to be a yellow card at the very least there it's gonna be a red I think that animation it is thorn uh thornily thornily red card mate see you later Jordan have a good one lad that is potentially pretty pretty crucial with not too long left down to 10 men could be a very, very big point in the game there. Losing a central midfielder. And you know what? There's a central player missing because Lyndon Dykes has found all the space he wants, all the space he needs, and bagged a goal in back-to-back -back games. Go on, Lyndon, son. 3-2. Absolutely huge. Things you love to see. Very happy indeed to see that third goal find the back of that because, boy, oh, boy, did we need it. We needed to get that lead back. Really, really good finish right into that top corner. Absolutely arrowed it in my dude let's make some changes let's just see this game out let's bring on Clark Salter because he always comes on and does a job for us you know what who's more tired is it Hutton or is it Dykes it's about the same I'm gonna take off Linden we'll bring on Tyler Roberts we'll swap Roberts and Lecco around Lecco can play that striker role because the pace being central see if we can get Hutton that hat trick because that title would be pretty tasty I'm just gonna say you guys I'm sure you guys already know what the title's gonna be you can probably work it out oh gotta be careful here Amos we lose the man again Three defensive errors, three occasions where a player in an orange shirt has just been stood in the box with acres of space. Ozzy and Clark Salt there, both completely asleep. In real life, Ozzy would have to step forward. In game, that's kind of where you'd expect your centre-backs to be. Neither of them there, but the man who is is Hamilton. And now we've got four minutes to try and re-secure a lead. And what I've done is given the ball away at the first possible opportunity. Come on, again, boys. We crack on. You guys can stick with us here for the last couple of minutes. We get the ball to Jonathan Lecco. Jonathan Lecco into Hutton. Hutton, please, mate. Hutton, please, mate. Go on, boys. You absolutely love to see it. Hat-trick hero Harvey Hutton. You absolute gem. Come on, lads. Huge, huge goal right at the death of it. We just need to stop conceding. We just need to stop conceding. We could honestly do absolute wonders we are going to struggle in the prem if we defend the way that we do but harvey hutton absolutely steals the show today with a hat trick of 
his own. It's got it's his first career hat trick. We know that for a fact. We know for a fact he has never scored a career hat trick because he's only ever played here and he's only ever played this season. Harvey Hutton, mate, take a bow. The hat trick hero saves the day. That is his sixth, seventh, and eighth goal in the league, and that has got to be all she wrote. Referee, surely, surely, there's no time for any more late drama. It's four three. It's been a seven goal thriller. It won't be an eight goal thriller because that is full time. Boy, did we salvage that one. That could have been very problematic, but it wasn't. We've come away with the points. Boy, do we need to. Well done, boys. QPR 4, Luton 3. And that was a game of not even of two halves. It was a game of just sheer mayhem. <laughs> a huge, huge result in the end as Hutton Hattrick hero against Blackpool. He really was. He was an absolute hero. He really did come to his own today. And again, we needed him to. And there we go, by the way. Really, really good example of what Johansson brings to this team. He's currently the assist leader in the championship. Not just saying it for the sake of it, he really does bring something to this squad. And for this season, for sure, he is a shoe in He is one of the first names on that sheet because he really does do us a very, very good job. But that is going to be where we round up today's video. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do leave a like on the video. It supports me, the video, the channel, and the series out to a whole bunch. If you're new, hit the sub button and turn notifications on to be told anytime that we upload a video. If you want to watch us on our live streams, it's Hersey Games over on Twitch and on TikTok. Our live stream on both. Make sure you go check out the links down below. And while you're down there, make sure you show some love to today's channel sponsor as well. Thank you so much, of course, for sponsoring the channel. But that's it for me. Thank you for watching. I've been Tom. You guys have been awesome. And I'll see you very soon. Look after yourselves. And of course, what? wash your hands now his name is in a bit. Thirsty. Slap bald head, yeah, it'll probably hurt me. Bang top bins, yeah, it'll probably hurt you. Ginger, streamer, platform, YouTube. Drop a name in the chat, we'll say hello. Entertain, yeah, you already know. Capital H, yeah, I'm a read it slow. Hursty Games, yeah, you already know.